good afternoon, everyone. I hope you're not uh, sleeping on your uh, lunch anymore. Um, so I'm Remy, as I was introduced, and well, I'm not going to talk about VLC 4.0 that much because Francois covered that a few hours ago. But I'm just going to talk mostly about, actually, more about Wayland and VLC, really. Um, uh, yeah, so this is this is just my point of view. It, please don't quote me as representing my employer because I do not represent my employer. Thanks. So, uh, quick introduction about myself. Uh, I joined VideoLand, so the VLC project, uh, as a student in 2003. So that's 16 years ago. Well, okay, 15 years ago, and I stayed on the VLC project uh, as a as a hobbyist after after I graduated. I spent a whole long, uh, quite a few years working for local Linux, Linux, Linux phones, but of course that didn't uh, pan out very well, as, as you might remember. And nowadays I work for Huawei Research as a software engineer. And I uh, have become the largest, uh, at least at, in terms of source code, I'm the largest contributor in the VLC project history. Uh, but let's get on to with, uh, with the actual content. Um, so this is a bit of a like chronology or milestone of uh, how VLC has supported Wayland and in a way, in a way how I think open, I think it's a good example of how open source projects are picking up on Wayland in general. I mean, we, we, of course, we, we, you will see variation, but um, so in 2010, I think we were already starting to hear about like this fancy new windowing management system that would supposedly be coming from, uh, I think, Intel research. And, um, well, I looked at it and I was like, well, okay, so we need to support this EGL thing, and, and EGL is the replacement for GLX, and it's basically how you bind your, um, that's how you bind the windows on your, on your operating system uh, to an OpenGL context, so you can then draw uh, 3D content with OpenGL, or oh, render, should I say. Um, but um, didn't really go very very far back at back in back in those days. EGL really only only supported X11 on Linux, so you couldn't really do Wayland with it. So it was kind of going nowhere, and for four years, nothing really happened, which got us to 2014. And finally, at that point, we were able to have VLC draw some kind of image um, in Wayland. Um, Using, uh, using actually EGL. Uh, in 2015, we switched to using MMFD, so if you are familiar with Linux, that's kind of the more modern way to handle temporary memory segments, um, or shared memory, shared memory segments. 2017, we finally got the first version of the XDG shell, which is a code word sort of for the name for the window management, like the desktop window management in, in, uh, in uh, Wayland. Uh, then the stable version a year later, and also last year we finally got input. Input working, which means that you can actually use your mouse and your keyboard with VLC on Wayland. And you also have the cursor working. So hopefully this year we'll get it uh, in a usable shape, and it should be shipping in 4.0. But this has been really, really slow, as you can see, in coming. And yet, we still don't have screen capture, uh, which is basically recording your, recording your desktop. So using VLC to record your, um, your desktop and, and encode it or stream it out. We don't have global hotkeys, which is stuff like multimedia keys or, or any custom uh, global key you might want to associate to VLC, even if VLC is not the active application, is not the focused application. And the skin engine is also not uh, supported in Wayland, and I don't know if that's more like a lack of engineering resources, and I'm not sure if really nobody's, or anybody's still using the VLC skin engine anymore, so maybe we don't really care. But we'll see why we're not doing the screen capture and the global hotkeys uh, later in the talk. So in a nutshell, what is Wayland, for those who don't know? Um, so as, uh, as mentioned in the intro, it was basically a successor for X11 windowing subsystem, which is, which is Oh, pretty much all Linux and BSD, and yeah, well, mostly Linux and BSD, and our Unix systems in general, except macOS, uh, use uh, for drawing uh, applications. Well, for drawing 
at all, really uh, in graphic mode, unless you're in plain text, you're probably using X11. And like, uh, so Wayland, like, like X11 is, uh, is, uh, is a client server protocol. Each app, each application, whether that's your browser, your VLC, uh, your word processor is a client. And you can have multiple clients at a time. Each application that is currently running will be a client. And you have one server, which is the display or the compositor in Wayland terminology, which is basically one graphic card with one or more uh, monitors connected to it. It's, it's an inter-process communication protocol. It runs over a socket, usually a unique socket. Uh, X11 could also run on uh, IP sockets, but, but uh, Wayland uh, doesn't really. It's really just a unique socket all the time. Like, also like X11, the protocol definitions, so all the message formats and parameters are defined in an XML file. Um, now in, in X11, it was more like an afterthought and, and something that the XCB projects added after, long after X11 was already taken into use. For Wayland, it has been like that from the beginning. And that also means that in Wayland's case, the specification is also part of the XML. Now it's just comments or text in the XML uh, prose for, for humans to read. It doesn't affect the computer, but, but essentially the protocol specification is also part of the protocol definition and it's in, it's in the XML files. Uh, input management, especially keyboard handling, is done with XKB common. Uh, you might have seen that library named among the package names on your Ubuntu or Debian distro or whichever Linux distro you're using. It's, it's basically the library that parses key maps, key map configuration files for the different languages and, and keyboard, keyboard layout that you might have. It's actually a rather complex uh, thing because you have especially, well, if you don't use Latin as your alphabet, as your main, uh, as your main alphabet or input uh, writing system, uh, you probably have a switch and support different mappings for different keys depending on key states, so it gets quite complicated. Wayland actually shares the same input system as X11, and both of them are parsing those files in client side using this XKB, XKB common uh, libraries. And, and the X actually refers to X11 in this case, but it is used for Wayland. So key differences between Wayland and X11. Uh, Wayland is a very tiny core protocol. Um, the, the baseline protocol in Wayland is extremely small and simple, whereas X11 has thousands of different uh, message, messages that it can send. Uh, Wayland is totally geared toward uh, shared memory. It doesn't support... Wayland itself does not support remote desktop. Uh, if you want to do remote desktop with Wayland, you have to convert it into a different protocol, typically VNC, or you could use remote desktop if you are more Microsoft-minded. So of course you can use Wayland as a client or the server side of a, or the remote and the local side of a, of a remote desktop session, but you can't use it as a, as a protocol that you run over the, over the network, unlike X11. But that's just because, I mean, most, most cases you do, your application is running locally, and for performance reasons you want to have shared memory, and of course shared memory does not work across the network by definition. Um, and another big, big difference, and that does affect um, software developers a lot, including myself, is that Wayland has very strict access control. Um, so a single client, so a single application, a single process can only manage its own objects within the protocol. So it's on Windows or surfaces, as they're called. You cannot see or you cannot definitely cannot modify and you can't even see uh, with the, win the, the enumerate the windows of other of other clients this is a security feature by design of the protocol it's meant to be able to enable uh, uh, sandbox applications running directly uh, talking directly to the to the compositor without to the display server without um, any kind of um, proxying uh, of course, this does cause problems such as, as I was mentioning earlier, you can't do screen capture and you can't do input grabbing, so you can't do uh, global hotkeys. And that's because obviously, well, if you can screen capture, you can see what other applications are doing and this is goes against the security model. Another side effect is that you can't do nested, nested windows between different processes, which can sometimes be a problem. Um, 
less nowadays, but it was a, it would have been a huge problem for like web plugins, for instance. There are actually extensions where you can explicitly enable this on a Windows basis, though. But I won't cover that today. So uh, anyway, if you want to port your application to Wayland, and this is basically the sort process that I've been into like four or five years ago. Well, either you open the API documentation, or you just or you're feeling courageous and you directly open the the header file, and you'll see that basically all the functions except for this one, W Display Connect, require another existing Wayland object. So you're like, probably I need to start with this one, and that would be a very good guess. You'd need to start with this function to create a connection to the display server. And then you keep browsing, and you're like, what can I do now that I have this uh, DPY, this, uh, well, now that I've connected to this display, what can I do with it? And that's where it gets tricky, because you're like, you realize eventually that basically there's nothing you can do other than call this display get register function. A get registry, I think. Oh, I don't remember. Anyway, and you're like, okay, but now what? If you're used to X11, you can create windows and, and cursors and, and all sorts of like images, all sorts of things. In real life, you can't. You just get this registry object, and you're like, I don't know what to do with this. I don't. How do I create my surfaces? How do I do anything? So it turns out that in real life, there's no um, there's no responses to requests. Everything is based on uh, events. Everything coming from the server back to the, cl to the client application is based on events. And so what the registry does is, um, is basically provide a list of the supported protocol extensions and baseline protocol features. And what you need to do is get the registry, and then the, the server will then eventually send you events that, oh, I support this extension, I support that extension, I support this standard feature, and so on and so forth. And f every time you find one of among that list of protocol extensions, one that you actually need or, or might want to use, you need to bind that extension to an object. And they, are, they, have, they have some kind of weird naming convention, so WL is for the core protocol, which is supported by everything. WP is basically the same thing, but defined later. I think they just had some... It's not very clear what the difference is really between them. XDG is for more recent extensions defined by the cross-desktop cross, uh, working group, so mostly KD and GNOME people agreeing. Um, so as I was saying, everything happens via events, and uh, another thing that is kind of uh, different from what you might be used to when you program a network or IPC protocol is that that is a standard Wayland library. It doesn't give you a queue of inbound messages. Like you say, get next message, and then you start passing it, and then have a big switch statement. It doesn't work like that. Instead, it, it expects you to register your callbacks for each type of message for each object. And it actually, at runtime, generates a type safe function call. Even so it's C, and you normally don't have runtime call generation in C. It actually does generate um, type specific uh, function calls uh, at runtime. And for this, it uses FFI, FFI which is a library for doing that kind, of, that kind of things. If you're interested in the details, you can, you can look at FFI on the internet, or libffi. I just mentioned that uh, you really need to be careful with version numbering because the version number of the protocol is basically what specifies which events and what parameters you support. And if you mismatch them, the runtime calls will not match between what you have written in the source code and what the runtime is actually expecting, and then you'll crash immediately. Um, but OK, the main purpose of Wayland and before it X11 was to, of course, show something on the screen. So all Oh, we used to draw, and now you cannot draw anymore. Um, so, um, so Wayland doesn't have any server-side painting, which, unlike X11, you cannot bleed pixels, you cannot draw lines or circles or triangles like you could do in X11. And there's also no server-side fonts, which is something that nobody was really using, but X11 was supporting. Um, you cannot do hardware overlays. And if you don't know what a hardware overlay is, it's because you probably didn't use them when they still existed. Nowadays, you don't see them anymore, so you don't need to worry about them. A bit more bothering, maybe, is that there is no modern, so-called modern 2D rendering API in Wayland, which would be similar to render in X. 
So behind there is basically just drawing rectangles and putting them on, on top of each other and scaling them and rotating them. Um, or you can draw with Wayland, well, you can use EGL, as I mentioned at the beginning. Uh, originally, Wayland was meant to be used with uh, OpenGL ES subset, but by now, it's been, of course, extended to support desktop OpenGL as well. Um, you can also use Vulkan if you want to do the really modern way. Um, so, and then if you just want to share plain, simple um, RGB pixel bitmaps or pixmaps, uh, you can use shared memory and just have 32-bit uh, RGB. But then you need to do the entire rendering down to the last pixel in software, and that's probably going to be slow, so you typically don't want to do this. You can also do DRM, uh, Direct Rendering Manager, not, uh, not Digital Arch Management, which is the way that Linux uh, manages low-level buffer access for GPU. But typically, it's something that the low-level uh, drivers do for you, so you don't need to worry about it. You can still sort of emulate render functionality. So you have the viewport extension, which supports scaling in hardware. So you, can, you don't have to scale in software your, 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 um, your, your PixMap. And it can also orient things, so it can rotate uh, at square angles um, or flip. And you have the subcompositor, which enables um, blending multiple. Um, surfaces, and there's uncalled subsurfaces, so you can put surfaces on top of each other on condition that they're from the same client. Another surprising thing that you will definitely hit if you do well in development and you port some existing application is the way that window size is handled. Um, and first, windows are called surfaces in Wayland, but basically they're windows. Um, the surface size or the window size on Wayland is defined by the content that you, are, that you have last attached. So the last drawn onto the, well, attach is the correct word, to a surface. So you say, I have the, I have the surface here, it's my window for my application, and this is the content I want to show at the next rendering until further notice. And this, the size of that content will define the size of the window on screen. It's not it's, it's completely the other way around of what it what used to be in, in Windows or X11, where the system tells you now your window is 100 pixels by 200 pixels, and if you draw outside those boundaries, I'm just going to not show it and screw you. You just have to follow that size. In Wayland, it's the other way because they want to have uh, perf pixel perfect rendering. The client says, now I have a surface ready of that this size. You have to show it at this size. And, and so it works in such a way that for instance, if you drag and drop a window, or if, if the system wants to resize your window for some reason, it will ask the application, that, hey, it would be nice if you could resize the window to a different size, but you don't have to do it. And when you do it, you have to then be careful about the ordering of the event, because you have to first uh, act, prepare the surface as a new size, then acknowledge the new size, and immediately provide the new size, otherwise you're going to have some desynchronization between the size of the window and the content, and your window is going to move around, and it's going to look really ugly. Another thing to keep in mind is that in Wayland, there's no decorations by default. Or there's client-side decorations, so it means that um, the application is responsible for drawing the border and the title bar and all the decoration that, that you typically have provided by the, by the window manager. And while this, this is a bit controversial, um, there is now an extension, but it's only since less than a year after much, much flame wars and discussions uh, in the community that there actually is a way now to ask a server to provide server-side decoration if you want them, but some servers still don't support it, and, are, and some developers are adamant that they will not support this. Uh, but this is something to consider. So normally, your UI frameworks so or Qt, GTK, or whichever you're using will draw the decorations for you, but, but if you don't have a, a UI framework, then you will have to draw the decorations or then hope that the window manager pro can provide them for you. Okay, this I'm not going to go through. And I think I'm done. So if there's any questions. Mm, nope. All right.
Quite a sink, then. Um, any questions? No. Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh. Yeah, earlier, um, yeah, but earlier um, I was mentioning about how do you uh, send Wayland content over network. And I, I mean, earlier, um, Remy was saying that there isn't uh, any core support. So the, the, key, the key selling points for Wayland, there's two key selling points for Wayland. Uh, the first one, and it's a very bad selling point in my opinion as an application developer is that they wanted to get rid the developers wanted to get rid of the X11 legacy which had become untractable. And it might be a valid point if you're an X11 developer, of course as an application developer like myself, I, I don't really care. It's their problem, or really. it's not my problem. But um, the other argument, and this is the more interesting one, is is, is uh, pixel perfect rendering. So in Wayland everything is synchronized. You don't have this effect where, for instance, I mean, you must have seen it on, especially on slow computers when you take the window and you resize it with the mouse very fast and the decoration moves but you see the old content and it's not at the right size. So in Wayland this does not happen because, because as I was mentioning with the size thing, the window manager will, will tell your application, ah, now your size should change, please change it. And then the application will tell when it's ready to change, to, when it has updated the size. And so everything will be synchronized nicely. And, and that is the key selling point, and, and this is why Wayland is basically a compositor and not a display server in the traditional sense that X11 is. Now, regarding, regarding uh, remote desktop, it, it, there was a bit of a controversy because it's not supported in the protocol, but of course you can still encapsulate it in some other protocol. Um, and because you have pixel perfect rendering and because you have this more optimized communication protocol than X11 was, then you have less latency issues than, than you might have had with X11. But to be honest, if you have latency issues with X11, uh, just switching to XCB from Xlib at the application level can already help a lot in terms of reducing the number of round trips that you need to do uh, for rendering purpose. Uh, but there also, I think, um, answering um, the issue here, um, there is actually an extension for uh, Wayland which, which does actually provide VNC style um, protocol over network. Mm. And that, that brings the efficiency and the solution really for, the, uh, for running applications on Linux over network. Hopefully with a similar level of, of efficiency as um, the Microsoft RDP uh, protocol that works on the widgets. Any further questions there? Okay, uh, um, uh, let's uh, thank Remy for his talk.